This is a frog, and you guys probably know frogs are amphibians. After the fish thought of leaving the water, they started evolving. Those who left water area changed to all other vertebrates, and those who stayed near water remained amphibians. Later the water guys evolved to frogs, toads, salamanders, and others. The one common thing about all amphibians was that their kids have gills to breathe underwater. The adults have lungs for land, and breathe through their skin in water. Evolution was not happy to see so many options for a puny jumping creature. So, it started messing the things up, and the results were weird. Just imagine, this guy wanted to leave the water and live on land. It had to grow limbs to support its body against gravity, and had to develop lungs to breathe air. It wasn't an easy task, but it didn't give up. So, it worked for around 100 million years to develop legs and lungs. Now it could stay happily on land. But, some 50 million years ago, evolution said, Hey you flathead, give me the lungs back. The frog was confused. Is the whole land covered by water? Nope, there is plenty of land. Are the lungs useless now? No, it is working fine. Then why should I give away my lungs? I'll keep it. Evolution said, You puny frogs are water creatures. You don't need no land or lungs. Just give it back. Thus, the frog lost its lungs. Scientists say that they still have a tiny lung-like organ in the body. But the bad news is, it's so small that they can't live on lands now. And around 60 million years ago, evolution looked at Afrobatrachia and started experimenting on it. It designed some with shovel-like nose and said, Your nose looks like a shovel, and I don't like it. Dig hole with that shovel, and hide your face underground. Then it looked at rain frogs and said, you too will make holes and live there, but you will do it backwards. Use your butt instead. Also, you'll come out only if it rains. Around 23 million years ago, it sent some to the desert of Namibia. That place barely has any rainfall, and frogs had to live absorbing the moisture from the air. Well, they started coping with the harsh environment. Since tadpoles needed water for gills, they started laying eggs that directly hatch into froglets and live their life in holes. Maybe evolution thought they would go extinct, but even without the rainwater, the cycle continues. This is an ant, and we recently talked about their mating. But let's talk about their weird evolution. Ants are super intelligent animals, but since ants were neglected by evolution, we are the top guns here. And what's the proof that ants would be the smartest? Well, we'll talk about that in a separate video. For now, let's see how evolution went haywire for these tiny insects. There are over 15,000 known ant species, so you can guess how evolution treats them. For example, this carpenter species was living a happy life in South Asia, guarding the nest. If enemies were nearby, it would release emergency hormone, call other ants for help, bite the intruder, and try to defend the colony. But evolution came there and said, if there is any case of emergency, you will explode. What does that even mean? Not only that, this flat head guy is literally the house door. If there is intrusion, it puts its head in the opening of the colony and closes the hole. Evolution sent this guy to desert of Sahara that can reach temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Scientists say these are the fastest ant species. Of course it would run fast when it has to walk on that hot sand. But the most weird evolution is for this harvester ant species, Mesor ibericus. The female in this species can give birth to two different ant species. One, their own species, and one belonging to Mesor structure. If you think since both are ants, what's the big deal? Well, they are as different as we humans are to chimps. And I will explain that in another ants mating video. Scientists claimed till now that it was not a possibility. But, when evolution rolls dice, logics are thrown out of the window, I guess. This guy with long horns is an Irish elk, and these are prime examples of evolution deception. A long time ago, these free-roaming elks used to live in the alpine forest and grasslands. Everything was going well, but evolution didn't like that. It started evolving the females in such a way that they were only horny with the large horn males. Soon, the males started increasing the antler's size. It was now a pain in the neck for the males. Literally. The ice age started ending, and the earth slowly started warming up. Now the grasslands started becoming dense, 
evolution could have chosen another path for them. It could have made the antlers smaller, or made the elks small-sized. But, it didn't care. The area changed to a big chaotic jungle maze. The horns started getting caught up in vines and tree branches. You can imagine moving inside a dense jungle with a 13 feet antlers. It kind of felt like this situation. They became sitting ducks for hunter-gatherers. Also, gray wolf and brown bears got free meals too. Then, Irish elk went extinct around 10,000 years ago. By the way, Irish elk were neither Irish nor elk. They were giant deer. And talking about deer, other deer with branched antlers were f***ed by evolution too. These branches are so weird that they get stuck during the mating fight. If they can untangle it, it's a huge relief. But if they can't, see these pictures for yourself. One moment you are fighting with the enemy, and the next moment you can't get apart. And the worst part is, you can now never mate. I don't understand why evolution would choose such a weird path. Then again, I don't understand evolution in the first place. This is an eye eye and these long-fingered lemurs are really weird. Their skull resembles less like a lemur and more like a squirrel. They have ever-growing buck teeth, kind of like hamsters and rabbits. They have big ears and can use echolocation like bats. They tap their finger on the tree branches like a woodpecker. These guys are good examples of evolution disaster. Evolution offered them the middle finger, and they actually accepted it. And I'm not joking. Just look at their hand. Well. That's their middle finger. How did they get to this point, you may ask? The story is simple. Around 63 million years ago, evolution tried to create something unique. It started experimenting on lemurs. The family branched, and these two new species emerged. Evolution gave them powerful teeth to chew trees, excellent hearing for echolocation, and good eyes for night vision. But when evolution looked at them, it only saw the middle finger. Hence, it left them without any care. It may be the reason why these guys didn't evolve for all this time. The others in the next branch kept evolving with regular updates. This species couldn't bear the trauma and left the world for good. But these confused guys couldn't even understand what's going on. They live alone in trees, almost never get off to the ground, and live on nest, kind of like birds. But they have some weird power though. They can tap tree branches with their middle finger with speed of 8 taps per second and can know the location of bugs inside the wood. Then make some hole biting the tree and use their middle finger to take them out. Yup, that's how they eat their food. Another heroic act is that they can insert their middle finger inside their nose. It actually reaches their throat. And they do it quite often. But since they haven't realized that evolution messed them up, they live their life. And the cycle continues. This guy that looks like a combination of squirrel and a cat is called Myacid. When a space rock hit Earth some 63 million years ago, many animal species including dinosaurs were wiped out. But these rat-sized bug eaters somehow survived it. Evolution was pissed off to see this, and it started experimenting on them. And I'm happy about that, because we are actually descendants of this rat-like creature. Around 40 million years ago, evolution created Myacid from these creatures. Then it started rolling dice. It first grouped them into cat-like and dog-like animals. Then the dogs group further branched into wolves, bears, raccoons, and others. Cats branched into tigers, lions, and hyenas. Yup, hyenas are closer to cats than dogs. And it doesn't make much sense, too. When felines were designed, the evolution dumped some of them into harsh dry lands. They somehow found a way to adapt to those dry lands. They even got bigger and more impressive. Evolution got angry, so it gave them sensitive and dry fur, suitable for dry lands. That's one of the reasons why cats hate water. Then it ordered these water-hating animals to live in the water and eat fish. Well, the cat went to the water and started fishing. That's why we call it a fishing cat. It's semi-aquatic now. Evolution chopped its tail in half, and its legs are webbed now. In the future, evolution will change this cat into this kind of creature. Then it will say, well, you are officially a catfish now. But since you are humans, you should chin up, cause humans are the only creatures to have chins. Yup, it's a weird evolution. And what's the reason? Well, nobody knows. The only thing I surely know is, as always, I love you guys.